Welcome to the Modern Medicine Movement Podcast with Dr. Thomas Hemingway. Have you ever looked in the mirror and said to yourself, I thought I'd be healthier, in better shape, feel better both physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and be further along in my life? If so, come on this journey with my dad as he explores all things health and wellness from a holistic, medical perspective, even as a classically trained physician. He'll share integrative strategies to optimize health and inspire you to join the modern medicine movement. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Modern Medicine Movement podcast and a big aloha. Dr. Thomas Hemingway here. (laughs) So pumped, so grateful, guys, to be here with you coming up on... Christmas and New Year's and just winter and all that good, good stuff. And just wanted to wish you and yours an amazing holiday filled with family, with love, with joy, and with peace. Been a heck of a year (laughs) this year, and I'm just super pumped and super excited to ring in 2021 with you guys in two short weeks. And oh my gosh, it's <laughs> actually less than two weeks. What am I talking about? 10 days from now. But um, just wanted to give you guys a little prelude this podcast with what's to come in the new year, what's coming for me, what's coming for you. Super pumped about a couple announcements I'm going to make later on in the show. And for right now, just wanted to reach out and thank you all for your time, for listening, for sharing, for all that you do. I get so pumped every time I hear from you guys and feedback. And I just hope that I can continue to help and bless and share and just inspire you guys to just live that that life that you've always dreamed of with optimal health of your mind, your body, your soul, your emotions, everything. And that's what I just every week just like to be able to share with you guys, little pearls. Oh, my gosh. It's just been quite a ride this year, and I'm just so grateful. And I can't wait for 2021. And so, anyway, if you guys haven't joined my Facebook group, it's free, the Modern Medicine Movement Podcast Health and Wellness Facebook group. Also, um, you can reach out to me always at Modern Medicine Movement Podcast at Gmail. If you have questions, if you have ideas, if you have, you know, topics you'd like to learn more about, I'll always keep you guys posted in that group on the latest podcast releases and other um, cool stuff that's coming your way. (laughs) 2021 is going to be an awesome year, and I got a couple things planned for you guys, and I'm Super pumped about it. I'm so pumped about you guys, the listeners, those that take time to to just tune in and hear these pearls that I've been, you know, studying and sharing and the things I've experienced with many hundreds and sometimes thousands of folks over the years and just wellness pearls that have helped me so much. I'm so grateful to be able to disseminate that and share it with you guys. So without further ado, let's get into it. (laughs) Anyway, guys, so it's coming up on the end of the year and the new year, 2021. And so I wanted to podcast this week on a topic that I think you guys will find pretty interesting (laughs) because, you know, I think most of you guys have at one point in your lives made a New Year's resolution. Has, Has anybody out there made one? Two? Ten? (laughs) Yeah, well, you know what uh, is super interesting is that one of the most common New Year's resolutions year after year after year, well, the two most common out there really are to lose weight and to get healthier, right? Anybody ever made that New Year's resolution? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's estimated that just in the U.S. alone, more than 45 million of us go on a diet each and every year. And there's other sources that quote much larger numbers because basically one half of us each and every year have tried to lose weight at one time or another. That's a lot of folks. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's a lot of folks. And so let me ask you this question. Did your diet or weight loss regime, did it work? Did you lose weight? And more importantly, did you keep that off for months and hopefully years? I hope the answer is yes, but survey says the overwhelming majority of folks that have been on a diet have not only not succeeded at keeping that weight off, but most of them have gained weight over time. Crazy, huh? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that in this podcast, and then we're going to talk about a super cool up-and-coming trending topic that kind of goes along the same vein, and we'll get into that just shortly, the notion of what they call mindful eating, right? Mindful eating or intuitive eating, which are not exactly one and the same, but they are very complementary, and I think it's an awesome approach to have on our minds for this upcoming year because, let's face it, dieting sucks, <laughs> right? I mean, just, you know, think about every time you've been on some kind of a diet. Like, was it awesome? Are you still on that diet? Is it something that you continue to do each and every day, year after year after year? Well, probably not. My favorite thing about dieting, well, <laughs> as my kids say, my worst favorite thing <laughs> is that diet has the word die in it. <laughs> so nobody wants to die, right? Nobody wants to go on a diet. Why would you want to do that? Almost all diets have some restrictive nature to it. And nobody wants to restrict themselves. Why the heck would you want to do that, right? And we just know that most diets don't stink and work, right? There was a large review just this past, uh, I believe it was November, pretty, pretty recent, the British uh, Medical Journal, or BMJ, super respected scientific publication, analyzed over 120 diet studies, diet trials that involved over 22,000 people who wanted to lose weight. And they were in many of the popular diets out there, 14 different ones, including the Atkins diet, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, the DASH diet, the Mediterranean diet. On average, they dieted for six months, at least six months on average. Um, and they were grouped into a couple of different categories, the low carb, the low fat, the moderate macronutrients. And what they found is that none of them really worked, at least long term. At six months, there were quite a few folks who had lost some weight. But by 12 months, almost all of them had gained back the weight, and many had overdone it. <laughs> and beyond what they started with, they actually gained even more weight, which sucks. Like I said, dieting sucks. And that's why I don't recommend it. This study included over 22,000 people. And they used all these diets, including the super popular ones out there. And the ones that cost the big bucks, right? Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, you know, all this stuff. And they just sucked. <laughs> they didn't work. They didn't work in the long term. And there's so many factors at play. I'll just touch on a couple of them real quick and then will give the spin that I'm looking towards in the new year that uh, doesn't involve any dieting whatsoever. <laughs> None. <laughs> because dieting not only sucks, it just doesn't work. And so I typically do not recommend a diet, right? Like, diets suck. <laughs> anyway, what's, what's staggering is that, I guess, if you just look at the CDC numbers, is that obesity and being overweight in the U.S. is just climbing at ridiculous numbers, you know, almost asymptotically, which is like, remember back into your algebra days when you're looking at a curve instead of just a linear kind of a straight line of, of the numbers going up. It's like going up and then it reaches this super steep slope and it's like skyrocketing. <laughs> and that's what's going on with obesity here in the U.S. and it just sucks. And it's not only in the U.S., but it's in the world. In fact, according 
um, to the WHO, obesity now is a bigger problem by the numbers than being undernourished or malnourished. In other words, there are more people by numbers throughout the world having issues with obesity than starvation. Like, it's holy crap. This is plaguing our society. This is an epidemic, truly, of the world. I mean, it's nutty. It's nutty that obesity is such an issue. And it's something we just have to tackle. We got to tackle this. And humbly, I would say that dieting is not the answer. Anyway, the CDC reports that here in the U.S. alone, the number of obese adults was 42.4% in 2017. These numbers are even higher now, right? It's crazy. That's being obese. That's a BMI of, uh, I believe it was greater than 30. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 25 and above is being overweight. Uh, 30 and above is considered obese. Now, don't get uh, caught up in the numbers. A BMI is called the body mass index, which is basically just your weight in kilograms, right? From the metric system, not in pounds, 2.2 pounds equals one kilogram. So it's your weight divided by the square of your height, also in meters. So it's good old SI or metric system. But in other words, if your BMI is 30 or higher, you fall within the obese range. If it's 25 to 30, you're in the overweight range. If it's 18.5 to 25, you're somewhere in the normal range. And less than 18.5 is the underweight range, according to the CDC. But the staggering statistic is that 60 some odd percent of us, about two thirds of us are overweight here, right at home in the U.S. And 44 percent almost now in 2020 are obese. So it's a huge problem of epidemic proportions, legit epidemic proportions. It's crazy. There was a recent study as well in the Journal of the American Medical Association or JAMA that uh, reported, it was very interesting, they tracked um, the famous uh, participants of the Framingham study. So this was you know, thousands of Americans, they tracked them for 24 years. And what they found is that being obese, in other words, this BMI, body mass index, between 30 um, and 34, that's the sort of moderately obese over 34 is, is even more, you know, obese. But uh, that first obesity group, the BMI between 30 and 34 was tied to a 27% increase in the odds of dying. So not a good thing. So obesity, like no big surprise, I think, is related to an early or premature death, right? Because your odds of having other concomitant or other additional health problems at the same time as obesity are really high, right? Most folks will have insulin resistance, prediabetes or diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, the so-called metabolic syndrome, you know, all of these things that will not only cause us issues in our lifetime, but may actually cause an early death. So not a good thing. I don't think any of us want that, right? We want to be around for our kids, our grandkids, hopefully even great-grandkids, right? <coughs> I know I do, and this is sobering. This is sobering. Right here at home in the U.S., almost 44% are obese, and sixty, almost 66%, two-thirds, are overweight, Two out of three people, like holy freaking crap. That's nutty. We also learned recently in my podcast with Dr. Ben Beckman, who wrote the book, Why We Get Sick. If you guys haven't read it, check it out. Get it on Amazon, get it on an ebook, or even just listen to it, right? On Audible. It's a kick butt book, and it just teaches us so much about the staggering numbers with insulin resistance, which as he proposes, is at the root of almost every chronic disease. And here, right here at home in the U.S., about 88% of us have some amount of insulin resistance, which is on the diabetes spectrum. And most doctors don't even check for it. 
Think about that for a second. 88% of us have some degree of insulin resistance. 80, almost 9 out of 10 people. Holy crap, that's ridiculous. But this is not a death sentence. Go re-listen to the podcast with Dr. Ben Bickman and the one immediately to follow that on how we can tackle this problem. And you will quickly learn and find out that we can change this. It is not difficult. It is not hard. And guess what? You do not even have to go on a diet. I'm against diets. Well, for the most part, I hate dieting. (laughs) Dieting sucks. (laughs) And I'm going to propose a way that we can change this and we can get to our optimal weight and health without dieting. There is something that we can do about this and so much that we can do. So let's get into it. Anyway, we're going to talk quickly a couple more things about why dieting doesn't work, right? So many of us, half of us, every year go on a diet of some kind. But unfortunately, most of us fail. And it's not because we suck. It's not because we have a lack of willpower. It's not any of that. So don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself. We'll talk all about this uh, later. We're going to give you just a little bit of a little prelude, a little precursor. But there was a cool study I just want to mention done by a bunch of uh, researchers at UCLA a couple of years back. And they also did a big review of what's called a meta-analysis where they took a bunch of studies that had been done on dieting and tried to figure out, like, what's up with all these diets and why are they not working? One of the main um, study reviewers was uh, a gal named Janet Tomiyama, uh, Dr. Janet uh, Tomiyama. And her humble conclusion from all of these dieting studies that they reviewed, which was over 30, that basically dieting (laughs) does not work. And what it did consistently predict was not weight loss, at least not in the long term, but it was a very common and consistent predictor of future weight gain. In other words, if you've ever been on a diet before, it's likely that you will not only gain the weight back, but you will very likely bounce and even gain weight beyond what your starting weight was. Like, this sucks. This is not what any of us want. And guess what? It's not your fault. This is biology. This is physiology. This is psychology. And we're going to get into it in super great detail, guys. Not We can't cover it all today, but I wrote a book on this, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to talk all about how we can tackle this issue, and we can succeed and conquer it. This whole issue about weight, about health, and how we can do it without dieting. Yeah, I wrote a book on this. It's pretty cool. I'm, you know, in the editing and reviewing process and getting a publisher and all that. And so it's gonna it's gonna be next year when it comes out, but I'm super pumped about it. I'm super pumped, guys, because it's gonna share information that's so valuable about this topic that at least half of us each and every year have on the top of our minds, you know, in a couple of weeks, right? New Year's coming up. And then we try and we try and oftentimes we fail. And I want you guys to know that it's not your fault. You're not weak. It's not a lack of willpower. It's biology. It's physiology. It's psychology. It it can be explained. And what's cool is it can be overcome. It can 100% be overcome. And at this point, literally hundreds of millions of people in the world have tried dieting. And it hasn't worked. Yet, each and every year, there's some new fad diet coming out, right? Like a couple years ago, there were all these kind of juice diets, juice cleanses, and then it got pretty popular to do the you know, paleo thing or the Atkins or the keto thing, you know, all these different 
you know, there's even a fruitarian diet, all this different stuff. There's low carb, there's low fat, there's, you know, all of these different diets out there. And guess what? Dieting in general, the studies show this is not just me on my soapbox. I mean, this is shown very clearly in literally dozens and dozens of studies that dieting for long-term weight loss and health just does not work, okay? Right? It does not work. And what I propose is there's a better way, and I'm going to get into it all in great detail in the book. And you guys, you guys are going to be pumped because you will not even need to count calories, right? Because calorie counting sucks. <laughs> shame, shame on Lulu Hunt Peters who got us into that over 100 years ago when she wrote the most popular, well, at that time anyway, it sold over 2 million copies, her book on dieting and calorie counting. Like she screwed up literally millions of us who have perseverated and focused and put all this emphasis on the calorie. And I talked about a couple of weeks ago, a whole podcast on the calorie thing, like calorie counting doesn't work. (laughs) The whole basis of it was messed up, right? Go back and re-listen to that podcast if you haven't uh, had the chance to. Super interesting stuff, man. Calorie counting, although I learned it in medical school and most registered dietitians, trainers, health enthusiasts out there have learned it. They believe it and it doesn't work and it's not based on good science. Anyway, why don't diets work? Well, one of the most common reasons reported is that they're just, they're restrictive, right? They're just by nature They are restrictive. They tell you what you can't do, what you can't eat, what you can't, you know, all this stuff. And we hate that. (laughs) We hate that. We might do it for a short period of time. And guess what? We will lose weight. But we just can't do this stuff long term because it sucks. It sucks to deprive ourselves. We just don't want to be deprived. We don't want to be restricted. And what I have to tell you guys is there's a better way. You don't have to be restrictive. You just have to be mindful and learn what your body needs and make, you know, a little bit better choices in some cases. And we'll we'll get into it in the book, but I just I'm going to give you some cool stuff today that you can take action on. Get started, get pumped, get amped for the new year. And what I what I just hate about, you know, this whole notion of dieting is that one, you or I often sets ourselves up for failure. Because as I mentioned, the numbers are such that the overwhelming majority of all diets in the long term, sadly, they fail. And like I said, it's not you. It's not your lack of willpower. It's just, it's biology. It's physiology. It's psychology. And I'll explain all this in the book. But what what I hate about this is that because we fail at it, we start to judge ourselves. We start to shame ourselves. We, you know, think that we're weak or we don't have willpower or we just can't, you know, we're not good enough. And this is the very garbage that Dr. Lulu Hunt Peters started sharing, disseminating, talking about over 100 years ago in her initial best-selling book on dieting and calorie counting. She's literally, I think, (laughs) responsible in a large part of getting us, especially here in the U.S., on this whole dogma about self-shaming, about, you know, the whole dieting business and, and calorie counting and feeling, you know, worthless if we're overweight and all this garbage. It's crap. It's total crap. The self-shaming is crap. It's terrible, and I hate it. But there is a better way, and we will get into it. We will get into it. But what's very interesting is just this cyclical nature of dieting can be explained with hormones. It can be explained with neurotransmitters. 
with the brain, with areas like the amygdala, the prefrontal cortex, we can explain all this stuff. Why it doesn't work. Why dieting does not work. Why we go into these cyclical processes where we diet, we restrict ourselves, then maybe we have a cheat day or a cheat meal or whatever. We feel bad, and then we get into this cycle, and then we binge eat, we self-shame, we feel crappy, and then it starts all over again. And then we just binge, and then we gain more weight, and then it sucks, and then we feel even worse about ourselves. And this is crap. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But we will talk how we can overcome all of this in the upcoming book. I'm just so pumped to share it with you guys. But what I want you guys to know is that you are good enough. You are capable and you are worthy to make this work. You can make long-standing, lifelong changes for you, for your health, for your family, for your kids, for your grandkids. You can do this. And why not now? Why not 2021? You do not have to go on a diet. We just will be mindful. We will be intuitive. We will feed our bodies in the ways that they were meant to be fed. And we will enjoy it. We will eat lots of great food. And this is not going to be a calorie counting deal. It's going to be a healthful way to be mindful about our practices, about our eating, about the big picture. It's not about the calories because calories in, calories out is crap. Not only does it not work in a physiological sense, it was not based on good science. I'll get into this in the book, but we, we talked about this in a, in a previous podcast, and it's just, it's crazy. It was based on this whole thing in the bomb calorimeter where they burned, incinerated food, and it just doesn't, doesn't work. It's not the way our bodies work. Yet, it's the dogma, right? Calorie counting, eat less, exercise more. You know, all this garbage that we've been literally fed since we were kids, right? And beyond that, you know, there's been all of these fallacies that have been shared about what we should and shouldn't eat. And we'll we'll get into all of that in the book. You know, this whole business about, you know, when I was a kid, I was raised to think, natural, real, whole fats, saturated fats, right? Like in eggs, in meats, you know, the grease off the meat, the tallow, the suet, the grease, you know, after you cook something, I was, I was made to think that all those things were horrible for you. They were going to kill you and you should do margarine instead because it's cleaner. It's from vegetables. Like, holy crap. That stuff is crap. <laughs> That's garbage. But anyway, we'll we'll get into that in the book. But what I want you to know today is as you round out the year, don't just do the same thing that you may have done many times before. Make some resolution about a number on the scale or about some kind of diet you're going to do. Like forget the dieting. Let's do something better for the long term something that will work for improving not only your waistline and your ideal body weight, whatever that is for you, but it will increase, make more efficient your metabolism. We will teach you how to burn that fat, those stubborn pounds, how to be more energized, how to tackle your new year with resounding focus and energy and, if so desired, lost weight as well. Because this yo-yo dieting thing that many of us have done over the years doesn't work. And it's not because of any kind of lack of willpower or anything else. It's truly physiology. It's truly physiology. And I'm not going to promise you some crazy you know, fad diet thing where you're going to lose all the weight you ever wanted in two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, whatever. Like, let's let's be realistic. If a diet or 
meal plan or whatever you want to call it sounds too good to be true, well, duh, it probably is, right? It probably is because most of us haven't put on these extra stubborn pounds over a couple of days or a couple of weeks. I mean, it may have been months or years. So to expect that they're going to just melt away and stay away in a short period of time is a little bit ridiculous, right? We just have to remember what our bodies were designed to eat for millennia. This is not a new thing, right? We got to think about this whole concept of food as medicine, you know, and I'll talk all about that in the book. And in my specialty, in my practice, it's sad because I've been now about 20 years as a physician and I've witnessed lots of crazy stuff both in and out of the hospitals and clinics and practices which are embarrassing to me. I'm not proud of. You know, we write so many prescriptions for so many just hardcore chemical agents because we're not teaching the right things. We're not getting to the root of the problem. So much of our healthcare issues, disease, you know, all these common medical conditions, so much of that can be solved through treating food as medicine. You know, just throwing another prescription out to treat it is a Band-Aid fix. It's not getting to the root of the problem. And there's so many things that we can accomplish with really treating food as medicine. I'm just going to give you one little statistic from the CDC because it's so sobering and I just can't not share it. Up to... 40% of the deaths in the U.S., according to the CDC, from each of the five leading causes, up to 40%, almost half of all the deaths in the U.S. every year are preventable. This is from the CDC's website, preventable. And seven of the top 10 leading causes of death are so-called non-communicable, which means that these are not diseases that you get from another person. You know, despite all the chaos and craziness of communicable diseases like this year, right, COVID and everything else, these are not anywhere near the top 10 causes of death in the U.S. What's the most common cause in the U.S. and worldwide? Guess what, guys? It's preventable. It's heart disease, the number one killer, and it is almost entirely preventable to a great extent. (laughs) It's crazy. Diabetes is up there. It's also largely preventable in in most, especially most of those that have type 2 diabetes. So, So these numbers are staggering. You know, we used to have, you know, 50, 100 years ago, huge numbers of deaths by communicable diseases, right? Infectious diseases, things like tuberculosis. And then in the 80s, HIV, HIV has fallen off the top 10 list because we got great treatment for it. And now it's all these preventable things, right, that are largely caused by lifestyle of the diets that we have, what we put into our mouths, and what we do or don't do, right, with respect to movement. It's just, it's sobering. It's staggering. And not only, unfortunately, do many lives get cut short, but it's probably the hugest, most significant strain on our nation because it's costing billions and billions and billions of dollars, right? $214 billion a year is just on heart disease and $138 billion in lost work productivity. That's just heart disease. You add in diabetes, that's another $327 billion a year. It's crazy. That's just in the U.S. alone. These are numbers from the CDC. So it is staggering. It is sobering. Not only that many lives are being cut short, but but it's one of the most expensive things in our national you know, budget. It's crazy. And this is not 
much different worldwide. This is not much different worldwide. And so these are problems that now, unfortunately, are so large, so rampant, something has to be done. And I really think that it is possible, it is doable, that we can make a difference. And so what I would propose to you guys that this is the year 2021 where we are going to make a stand and we are going to put an end (laughs) to this ridiculously crazy cycle that many of us have been through, this yo-yo cycle where we go on some kind of a diet. We lose a little weight and then we bounce. We gain it back and then maybe we gain more weight and then we get uh, all down on ourselves and all of this. I'm going to teach you in my upcoming book how we can do better for ourselves, for our body, for our mind, for our soul because it is doable, guys. It is doable. And the cool part, it is doable without an app without calorie counting, without taking a long, super long list and documenting every single thing we put into our mouths. It's a couple of basic principles, and I can't wait to share them with you in my book. But for right now, I'm going to leave you with this. 2021, let it be the end of dieting and the beginning of mindful or intuitive eating. Because let's face it, 2020 was a jacked up year, right? The one cool part, you know, in all these statistics is that more people were starting to cook at home and eating less of the sort of garbage, highly processed takeout foods, you know. More people were actually cooking, which is awesome. But also more people were eating comfort foods, so I don't know if they if they balanced each other out or not because most of those comfort foods, let's face it, are garbage for our bodies, right? Highly processed, refined carbohydrates. I mean, you and I remember 2020 was a crazy year. You go to the grocery store and guess what's out in almost all of the stores? All of the stuff in the middle, right? The pastas, the quick fix cereals, quick fix meals that are full of chemicals, full of super highly processed grains, carbohydrates, flours, super highly processed stuff that is really not awesome for our bodies. And what was left? The good stuff on the perimeter, right? The fresh fruits and vegetables. I don't know about you guys. I never once this whole year was in a store where all of the produce was gone. But many times I noticed all of the pasta was gone or All of the canned beans or whatever it was were gone. Or all of the highly processed breakfast cereals or whatever else were gone. Right? So we we as a (laughs) you know country in in large part weren't weren't making the absolute best food choices that we could have. And a lot of people talk about the COVID twenty as the twenty extra pounds, right, that they might have put on during this whole COVID thing. And it's sad, but what I want to tell you is it can be changed. We can do this. We can do this. We are capable. We are powerful. And the start is going to be with tossing this idea of dieting, the end of dieting, and we're going to mindfully, mindfully and intuitively eat in the way that we have been designed to eat and designed to move for thousands of years. It's going to be awesome. In fact, I, uh, it was interesting. I, I've been, I've been <laughs> not only for the book, but I've been interested in this topic for quite a while. You know, what uh, I like to call mindful eating, and I came across the intuitive eating part too, which is not exactly the same thing, but it's, shares a lot of commonalities, and basically it boils down to eating what our body needs, right? And they kind of go together. Mindful eating is really paying attention 
to the process. And I, I, I came across this really cool uh, study where they looked at basically dozens of studies that were done on mindful eating. And I'll share with you um, in the show notes here. It's from the Nutrition Research Reviews. And it's volume 30, issue number two, from July 18th, 2017. It says, a structured literature review on the role of mindfulness, mindful eating, and intuitive eating in changing eating behaviors, effectiveness, and associated potential mechanisms. Super interesting, interesting study, guys, because it synthesized literally dozens of of studies that were done on this whole concept of mindful eating. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but if you are into it, you want to read it, it'll be in the show notes. I'll put a link to it. Super interesting. Um, Talks about many, many studies that have been done. The overwhelming majority of them showed a very positive effect of this mindful eating approach. And basically, just to kind of summarize it for you, it's the concept of being present, not only with your food choices and the cues that your body has, you know, of either satiety or hunger. You know, we've talked about this before, the sort of hormonal and other cues, be it thirst or hunger. How do we differentiate that? You know, often we're thirsty when we think we're hungry. We can learn how to pay attention to the signals, but also we can learn to be present in the moment that we are eating, right? This is a cool concept, right? We put the phone down for 20 minutes. Hopefully we have the opportunity to be with a loved one, maybe a family member or our kids or whatever, and spend that time with them. I so look forward each and every day to dinner with my family. We almost always have dinner together, and I love it. I mean, if I'm working a late shift or a night shift or something, I may not have that opportunity, but but we really strive to have family dinners where we can put our phones down. It's a great time to be connected with somebody that we care about and be mindful not only of them, but of the whole process. And this just involves pretty simple stuff. Like I said, it's not going to involve a calculator. It's not going to involve keeping notes or, or charting you know, every single thing you put into your body, but you'll be mindful both in the moment when you eat, where you will put the phone down, hopefully take 20 or 30 minutes. You will focus on who is there, being present, and the food in front of you. What does this mean? It means you'll slow down the process. And guys, I'm going to be real with you. Like, most of my life until the last few years, like I sucked at this. <laughs> I would literally like, I love to eat. I've always loved to eat, but it would kind of get in my way. It would cramp my style because I had so many things on my to-do list that like I couldn't stop and eat. Like I just, I just literally like I would be working on something. I'd be reading something. I'd be, you know, putting a couple bites in my mouth, chewing them haphazardly, quickly, and I'd rush on to the next thing. I was not being mindful. But what I've learned is that not only do I enjoy eating even more, I've always loved to eat, but but being present in the moment, be it with whoever, family, friends, whoever's with me, and just with the food in front of me. I chew it more. I slow down. I taste it because what I'm going to propose to you guys, the foods that I'm going to propose and recommend that we eat, they are tasty foods. Like I'm not going to restrict you guys to, you know, eating kale three meals a day or juice in it three meals a day or just drinking a protein shake three meals a day. Like who wants to do that, right? We, we know that that doesn't work. It's going to fail, <laughs> It's restrictive. I'm, I'm not going to be restrictive in that way in my book or my recommendations. We're going to eat, and we're going to eat flavorful, savory, tasty food, but it's going to be real. 
It's going to be whole. It's going to be natural. And you will savor it. You will enjoy it. You will appreciate it. You will be present. You will be mindful. And this, you're going to love it. It's, it's a cool thing. You'll enjoy this time. You'll enjoy your food. And the numbers will melt away. The pounds, the inches, they'll, melt, they'll literally melt away because you will be choosing the foods that your body really desires and craves that are good for your body and tossing the other, the other stuff. And you will no longer be hungry all the time, right? This whole notion of like having to eat every two to three hours that we were taught in nutrition school or medical school or college or physiology or PE or nutritional studies, whatever it was, like this is crap. It's not based on good evidence and it's not the right way. It's not the way our body has done it for thousands and thousands of years. We're going to be present in those moments that we eat. And for the most part, we are going to stop snacking and the pounds, the inches, all that's going to melt away and you're going to feel so much better, so much more energized. You will be feeling full or have that satiety where you won't feel like you need to eat every few hours. You won't be craving stuff in between meals. But when the meal comes around, you will just enjoy it and the pounds and inches will melt away. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Can't wait to share this with you. But let me at this time just get you pumped about it and pumped about the new year, about 2021. It's going to be awesome. Mindful eating, intuitive eating, and saying yes to ourselves, to our bodies, to what they need is going to be the theme, the goal, and it's going to be awesome. I'm so pumped about it, guys. Super exciting. Like I said, I'll put this uh, study in the show notes. It's really cool. It actually has a lot of really interesting studies, and it's it's basically one of these things that it's natural, it feels good, and it's not hard. That's what I love, 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 love so much about it is it's not difficult. These are not hard things, and we can do this. It will make a difference. You will feel better, stronger, more energized, healthier, and have a positive outlook on yourselves, your life, your world, because it's not only going to change you, but it'll help to change the world, right? In so many ways, less chronic disease less of the overwhelming pandemic of obesity and being overweight and all of these chronic illnesses that come with it, there'll be less of that. And guess what? Through eating whole, real, natural foods, it's actually going to be better for the environment as well. I can't wait to share all this with you in my upcoming book, but I just want to get you guys pumped. As soon as I got all the deals worked out with the publisher and all of that and and where it's going to be and how you're going to get it. I'll let you know, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great new year. There's actually a few other cool things I'm going to be doing in 2021. And I'll share that with you in in the coming weeks. But for now, I just want to thank you and get you pumped. It's going to be awesome. For now, enjoy these last few days of the year with your family, friends, loved ones. It's a great time to be alive and so much on the horizon. Aloha. Aloha.